What's up you guys? Welcome to this week's video. We're going to talk all about solar charging or wireless or remote charging for your electric toys that you may take out camping or go to the desert like I like to. We have the 2024 Wired Freedom and my son's Mototech 1000 watt electric dirt bike. So what I usually do when I need to charge these up is I bring something like this along. If there's no power available, I'll use my EcoFlow Delta 2 Max lithium iron phosphate generator and my four 110 watt EcoFlow folding solar panels. Now this will put out about 400 watts total and it can fill this thing up pretty quickly. Like I said, it's a 2000 watt hour generator and it has enough capacity to fill your bikes, I'd say at least two times if it's full when you bring it with you. And if you need to, you can charge it up in the sun. Uh, if you want something smaller, there's options like this 330 watt hour lithium ion generator that is much more portable However, you're not going to be able to fully charge your wired freedom with this without having the panels connected while you're charging it. I'm going to be using the uh, 2024 wired freedom charger as well as my son's electric dirt bike charger at the same time on this bigger system to show you kind of what it can do. It's a great setup. It's a little heavy. It's a little expensive, but what's great about this is you can use it as a backup home generator. If the power ever goes out, it can run pretty much anything you'd need to run in your house, even a vacuum or, you know, if you have to run your refrigerator and some lights, if the power goes out for an extended period of time, it's actually a great option to have lying around. It's also silent. So you can leave it indoors um, and you can charge it during the day when the sun's out and bring it inside so you don't have to have extension cords running all the way outside your house. So let's get into the details here really quick. This is an EcoFlow Delta 2 Max, like I said. It has about a 2000 watt hour total capacity and it's able to put out about 2400 watts. Um, it also has the ability to charge up very quickly at 1800 watts from out of a normal home outlet. So any outlet in your house, you can plug it in and it can quick charge. It also comes with an app where you can control the speed of the charging, which is really cool. And you can put it to 400 watts, 500, 600, 1000, 1800, whatever you want to do. And if you just need to bump it up right before you go out of town or something, or say you don't want to bring the solar panels with you, you just want to bring two or three extra charge cycles for your freedom. This would be something that can do that. Um, it's really cool. It's got four USB outlets. It's got two 100 watt USB-C outlets as well. And it's got two connections in the back. It also has two connections to add auxiliary batteries if you want to connect uh, more systems together or just add extra batteries. And it has six normal outlets as well. It has your 12 volt outlet down here. And it has two charging ports here, which uses XT90 um, connectors and you have your regular home charging there with the cord. So it's at about 80% right now. I'm going to break out one of these panels just to give you an idea of how it sets up and how easy it is really to use. I'm not going to do all four because the sun's not really out right here and my house is blocking everything, but I just wanted to show you how the system works. This uh, carrying case actually doubles as a holding, I guess you could call it a rack or a holding system to hold the panels in place at an angle so that they can capture as much sun as possible. All right, so I'm gonna do my best to kind of one-handed open these panels and set them up as much as possible. I may need to take a break here just to kind of do some uh, little finagling here and there, but basically you unzip this here and inside is the foldable panel, okay? And it has its two plugs. And all you do is you basically lay this out and these are 110 watt panels, monocrystalline uh, panels. There's four separate sections. Okay, and that just lays out like that. And then you have your two connectors here. Now these connectors, all you have to do is you can put them in uh, parallel or series. I end up putting two in parallel and then put those into the back of the generator. But for this example, I'm just gonna use this one particular panel um, because I don't feel like setting all four up and then tearing them all back down. It is a little bit of work, but like I said, you know, in an emergency at your house or if you're out camping, it's a great system. It works really well and it's actually not that heavy. These panels, all four of them probably weigh, I don't know, 10 or 12 pounds each, maybe not even that much. And then the generator itself weighs about 50 pounds. So it is about hundred pounds, but you don't have any gas, you don't have any oil, you don't have any noise, and you can set this up anywhere. You know, if you're camping, if you're at the desert, all kinds of different locations, it's a great option so that if you're at a place for multiple days in a row, and there's no electricity, you have a system. Also, if you are camping, you can plug in lights, you can charge up cell phones, you can charge up laptops, Anything you may need to do, you can use with this system here. What we are going to use is the connector cord that comes with it. So we plug these two 
ends into the solar panel and then this XT90 connector is going to go into the back of the generator. So like I said, it's really easy to connect these parts because they can only connect in a certain way. Okay, so you plug male into the female and the, the male into the female here and you're good to go. But I want to connect this now to the back of the generator. So we just simply open this up here and plug this into, let's plug it into PV1 right there. Okay. You give us a little more range. We're going to go ahead and open that out. All right. The next step is to grab the case here. One side is sort of a floppy side and the other side has a hard piece in it and that's going to be the piece that you actually stand up. So it's kind of backwards to what you may think, but you put the soft side down and the hard side up. I'm going to set this camera down for a second. And basically this goes underneath here and you grab your, your clips and the clips. I'm going to grab two of them. Now normally you would do all four, but for this example, again, I just want to keep it brief, but you put your clips in here on top. Okay, one there and one on the other side here. Okay, and then you're going to lift the panel up. And what you do is you leave it at an angle. And then these clips go down into right there. Let's see if I can keep this all in the camera shot here. And then you bring this clip over here and it clips in. Now it's going to be a little tight but it's meant to be tight that way it holds it in place. Okay. And then you put this at an angle, depending on how much angle you need for the sun. Now it is a little cold out here and these haven't been in the sun for a while, but after being out in the warmth, it kind of makes this lay flat. And if it's windy or you have any other issues, you can tie these straps here at the bottom, uh, can hold the other clips and can hold these two bottom pieces. So it prevents it from shifting forward and back. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put this out over here in the sun. We're kind of running out of sunlight, but I'm going to try to move this out into kind of the street a little bit here in my neighborhood just to see if we can get enough solar from the sun to show some charge here. Okay, so I have the panels out here set up sort of on the edge of my driveway in the street. It's not ideal uh, because it is winter, so we're not getting quite as much sun as we normally would. Luckily, the clouds kind of decided to uh, go away a little bit, and so we have full sun at the moment. Uh, I just wanted to show you kind of what we can expect as far as charging. We're around 100 sometimes as high as 105, 104 watts, which is great. These are rated at 110 watts. They're incredibly efficient panels. They even have some sort of backside that can absorb a little bit of refractory reflection sunlight somehow. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but that's what they claim. So at this rate, the generator is at 100%, or I'm sorry, is at 80%, as you can see there in the center, uh, but it's claiming about five hours until it's fully charged with just one panel. So, you know, if we extrapolate that out, if we had all four panels going, it would probably be around an hour, maybe hour and 15 minutes for 20%. So you figure, you know, if you had to do the other 80%, you multiply that, you know, four times more. So you can assume about five hours, six hours with full sunlight and all four panels out, which is great. Um, you can also assume if you're getting 400 watts and it's a 2000 watt hour system, roughly, that's going to also take you, you know, 20 divided by four is five. So about five to six hours to get a full charge on this. And again, at 2000 watt hours, it's probably going to fill, I would say your 2024 wired freedom in about, well, you know, depending on how full your battery is on your wired freedom, it's going to take longer or shorter, but realistically, uh, you could get, I would say, I'm not sure. Let's check how many watt hours this battery pack is 1200 watt hours. Okay. So this is 1200 watt hours, 20 amps at 60 volts. So 1200 watt hours, you would get almost two full charges out of this generator if it's fully charged, which isn't bad. So if you go with the full bike and you go with this fully charged, you're going to get about three cycles, three full battery charges on that bike, which is pretty good. Now, if you bring just even one solar panel or, you know, possibly more, then you'll be able to get even more charge out of that system. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug in both of these bikes to the generator 
so that we can see kind of what the draw is with just a 2024 wired freedom, how much power in wattage that charger is pulling. And then I'll plug in my son's Mototech 1000 watt electric dirt bike and we'll see how much power we're pulling from that. It'll also give you, we got a red tail hawk here trying to, trying to hunt in the background, but I wanna see how long these should last. It'll give you, once you start drawing power as opposed to charging, it'll tell you how long it'll take to fully deplete the battery of the generator, just like it does when you charge, it'll tell you how long it takes to fill it in hours. So let's take a look at that. Okay, one thing I wanna mention, I really can't stress this enough. When you're charging your bikes or any electronic device, honestly, um, I don't know if this applies to cell phones, but I'm sure it does, but even electric scooters and everything else, be sure that you plug in the power into the battery that you're charging first, and then come in and plug in the power to the backside of your generator. We'll turn that button on to turn power onto those or whatever it is that you're charging from, whether it's an outlet, plug in this plug, which goes to the charger last. Do not plug it in first. And the reason why is because if you plug these plugs into the device you're charging, into the battery you're charging, it could potentially blow the fuse of that battery. I've had this happen on scooters and other devices, so be sure you start by plugging in your battery first and then plug it into the outlet of the wall. Okay, so like I mentioned, let's plug in the wired e-bike first. Now, when you're doing this, um, I have heard that you can charge, and I saw in the manual as well, that you can plug this in connected to the bike or off the bike. At first, somewhere on the paperwork, it said to charge the battery off the bike, but then I saw later in, in the manual itself that it's fine to charge on the bike. So I plugged in the charger into the battery first, like I said, then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna plug in the battery to the backside of the generator. So we just come back here, we'll pick an outlet here to plug in, and we'll do that. We'll make sure the AC is on to these outlets here, and then we'll go back to the front. We are getting a little shading on the panel, I'm gonna have to move it here, but you can see we're getting about 186 watts coming out of the battery, with 77 going back in. We'll come back over here, as you can see, getting a tiny bit of shading on this, so we'll just kind of pull that out just a little tiny bit there to get full sun again and then we'll come back here all right so that puts us at about 98 99 there it goes around 100 watts again i'm not at a perfect angle might still have a tiny bit of shading there on the bottom but we're getting about 100 watts in and about 184 watts out to the charger so that's showing 14 hours of total time draw. So it's showing the 60 Hertz outlet there. Um, so not bad, 184 watts. So if you had two panels, theoretically, you could charge this generator while also charging the bike. And then when you stop charging the bike, obviously you'd have a lot of extra power refilling your generator. So with four panels like this, you could probably charge multiple devices and still be filling up the generator. And then when you leave, or say you have some other you know, lights running or you're running a refrigerator or something like that. So it's really a great setup. Okay, so next we'll plug in my son's Mototech bike. Like I said, don't forget, this is an important step. It always kind of messes me up because it makes me think it's backwards, but first you plug in the device that you want to charge. Okay, so first you plug in the device you want to charge then you come over and you plug in the actual charger itself to the outlet. I know it seems kind of backwards, but that's the way it's recommended and that's the way that I found prevents you from blowing fuses and batteries and causing other problems. So now if we're looking at the output here, we're showing, there it goes, 268 watts now to charge, 267 to charge both bikes. Now. Full disclosure, my son's bike is fairly charged already. It's about three or four bars out of four, I think. My bike itself is only at half. So we're at about two bars out of four. So it's gonna slow down the wattage that is required to charge as the battery starts to fill up. And almost all batteries do this. At the lowest point, they charge quickly. At the higher point of the voltage, the battery starts to slow down. Kind of like when you're filling up your gas tank you're filling it up full and at the top you have to kind of slow down because of bubbles and pressure. 
Same thing with a battery. You don't want to be charging at a high amperage, at a high amount of electricity, basically, when you're at the top of the battery's voltage maximum. So the built-in controller will automatically do that. But again, just to give you an idea, I'm going to move this panel because it keeps getting shaded here on the corner. i move it over just a bit to give it that full sun. And the angle is also going to make a difference as well. I'm going to kind of pull this downward, try to get that maximum. They're rated at 110 watts. And now after getting out of the way of the sun there, we're still getting about 99. Again, you'd really have to angle those right at the sun and make sure there's no shading at all to get that 100. I've even gotten 110 out of these. It has to be really bright sun. You have to be just in the right conditions at the right angle, but it is possible. So with two panels, you'd be putting in about 200 watts and putting out about 265. So you're really only using about 65 watts of power with the sun connected to this generator. So pretty cool system. I'm going to let these bikes charge up a little bit and then we're going to go take them out around the lake. My kid's going to have a fun time. We're going to take some RC boats in our backpack and then we're going to see how they do around the lake. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video. If you have any comments or any questions about this system here, leave it down below. I'll reach out. I respond to every question that everyone has and I really appreciate all the feedback. All right, we'll see you on the next video.